welcome. I'm Harmony. I'm a watercolor artist, and this is the fifth episode of Harmony and Friends, Casual Conversations About Art and Business. While I tell you a little bit about today's topic, I'm going to get a question up for you as you're watching. And that is, Tell us if you've ever opened an online shop for your art and on which platform. And if you haven't, tell us what is holding you back. So I love learning from artists who are making a living with their art, whether they're full time, that's a huge dream for a lot of people, or they are juggling multiple careers at once. I love hearing from people who are actually doing it. And I want this to be like a real conversation you would have with your friends, it's not necessarily the glossy, perfect version, but just, hey, this is how I'm actually doing this. Here's the challenges. Here's what's working for me. And with that today, we have three amazing artists who are just, in my opinion, from the outside, at least crushing it with their online shops and their art sales. I'm super impressed. And I know for me, it's a goal to get on that and make that one of well, the first really focus on multiple income streams that I want as an artist. And I know for a lot of you, you have that same goal here in the new year. So we're going to bring the artists on. They'll tell you about their personal experience, any tips they may have for you. And with that, let's get straight into welcoming them. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Thank you so, so much for joining. I'm really excited and curious about what you have to share. So I'm going to give you, <laughs> I'm going to give you each a few minutes just to introduce yourselves in case there's anyone here that's watching that hasn't heard of you. Um, so Ilaria, why don't you start two to three minutes? Tell us a little about yourself and your art business. Sure. So my name is Ilaria. I'm an Italian illustrator. I am based uh, in Berlin. So I was born in Rome and then decided to move to Germany. And yes, I used to uh, work as a graphic designer. So I worked uh, as a graphic designer for 11 years. And then at some point I decided to switch my career. So I became a self-taught illustrator. So it took me a little while to, you know, find my style and see which media I like to use and stuff like that uh, for my art. And then, uh, yeah, one step after another, I managed to find the style and I opened the shop. And then in the last years, I got published as well. So as a children's book illustrator, and I uh, became also a Domestica teacher. So I have a course <laughs> on Domestica, which is an online platform for classes, courses, stuff like that. Yeah, Very I'm uh, yeah, I'm a mom also uh, of a little boy, <laughs> four years old, and uh, yeah. Uh, it has been challenging this year to switch the career and have the kid at the same time, but uh, mm. that's also been an opportunity for me, uh, for example, to switch to the iPad. So I was more free, like to work while he was taking a nap or stuff like that. So I got the opportunity to, to experience with Procreate. And uh, so for my style has been uh, really good. So yeah, and I'm here. <laughs> Like you're juggling so much and yeah. I'm interested to hear how, yeah, how you managed to build a successful online show over the years, because yeah, I, my mind is blown when I go check out your link. So it's pretty cool. Welcome. Thanks for joining. Um, Teresa, how about you? Tell us a little about yourself. Hi. Uh, so, uh, hi, everyone. I'm Teresa. I'm, from, I'm based in Porto, Portugal now. Um, I studied architecture here before I realizing I want to be a full-time illustrator because I was already making some illustration work. So I moved to London in the UK and I've lived there for a few years where I, I made a master in illustration there. Um, and it was when I started working in some collaborations and applying to competitions and understanding a little bit more of how the illustration market would work. So after the course, I decided to move back to Portugal and to get my own space um, for a studio because I work a lot with handmade techniques. Like I make a lot of collage. I work with stamps as well, um, sketchbooks. I also love screen prints. So I really felt the need to have uh, a space dedicated to hold all these handmade techniques. 
and I got a space uh, and it was also a showroom only more recently I turned it uh, in a physical shop as well um, yeah and it's, so I run my studio as well and the physical shop as well as the online shop and um, yeah my work is inspired by nature and urban landscapes that's why I use a lot of geometric shapes and more organic ones um, yeah, so I do a bit of these things and my work is very pattern related, like I really love working with uh, collaborations like for textiles and pattern design and everything that has color. Um, yes. That's it. Super cool. Yeah, I, I love it. And I'm so glad uh, you're here, too, because I think you have that interesting angle as well of having not just an online shop, but even having a physical shop, which is uh, super interesting. Um, and I think not that many artists have that experience. So I'm really interested in hearing. And just for the audience, something I want to mention that I think is cool is that these three artists have all pull this off or are in the middle at least of doing it. And um, at the same time, they have totally different styles. So their approaches, I think, to their shops are a little different, the products, but also their art styles are so completely different. So I, I personally find that so encouraging. Like there is a space for you to carve out as well. They're not all doing the same thing. So super cool. Harriet, how about you? Tell us a little bit. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. Uh, I am Harriet and I uh, run made by Harriet which is uh things that I make that I've turned into products that I'm somehow selling and they're yeah turning it into a bit of a business that means that I can carry on doing what I'm doing so kind of feel like I'm free rolling and just kind of seeing where it goes there's no structure or whatever it's just kind of happened accidentally overnight I did a um degree in fine art photography in Glasgow uh, I'm based in the UK I'm based in the southwest UK um, and I didn't do anything creative for maybe 10 years and we didn't do a lot of drawing at university and I started drawing and illustrating about five six years ago and it's mostly most of my work is dogs we've gone on to apparel this year or 2022 went on to apparel uh, and I've got socks and mugs and ceramics and tea towels and just kind of things uh but most of it if not all of it has dogs on um and now with this year we've been doing tattoos tattoo tickets so people have my work tattooed on them which is great so most of my stuff is shipped from the uk and we ship globally which does have its own issues i was on etsy but i've moved to shopify and things have kind of snowballed without me realizing without me trying without any sort of like structure or business plan or yeah so now I actually have to be a bit serious and people are asking me like proper business questions that I'm having to address but um yeah I'm a bit it's a bit chaotic here but this is made by Harriet and I am Harriet <laughs> I, I love it. And your dog is just always make me laugh. I have one of your like rainbow dog uh, cups with the little TVs. And I just, it always puts me in a good mood when I drink my coffee out of it. <laughs> well, I've, ju I've just got a cat. So I think I'm going to have to start drawing him. And then I was like, oh, like, no, you can't change you your brand. Like, no, I know. <laughs> I mean, that's still be probably double A, but I was like, do I put teeth on the cat? I don't. Not sure, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, all these dog people that are your fans, they're just... I know, but they're all combos. I've, I've heard through the grapevine there's people who have dog and cats, and so maybe there's I another know. audience there, I don't know. I'm just messing with you, you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, thank you all for the introductions. We're going to move on to kind of a quick fire round. So what this means is this is not where you speak to five, 10 minutes or so on the topic. This is just like a sentence or two. And we're going to go around. You're all going to answer each of the questions. So um, I think um, we have covered the first one, but maybe summarize it in just in a sentence or two. What kind of art business do you have, Ilaria? Yeah, so I have uh, an online shop uh, in which I sell my illustration in different uh, forms, I would say. So it's mainly merchandising. Uh, so it's also, yeah, stickers, sticker sheets, washi tape, pins. It's really different. Um, and also my, yeah, the illustrations uh, that I sometimes print here uh, in the studio as well. So it's mainly, yeah, it's mainly that uh, merchandising, I would say. Yeah. Thank you. Teresa? Yeah, so regarding to the online shop, because uh, I also work in collaborations for brands, but um, 
online I sell open edition uh, prints. They are all signed and stamped, even the open editions. And I sell also originals like screen prints or uh, collages and also some textiles like tea towels and uh, lamps that I started do uh, doing last year. And um, I really like the feedback um, of how it's going and also some pillowcases and small posh bags or pencil cases because I work with a lot of textiles. So I, for me, it made sense to start developing um, my patterns into the textiles. Um, yes, yeah, so it's like small edition products there. Most of them are all made here in Portugal. Yeah, but we can talk more about that ahead. <laughs> yes, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Harriet, how about you? What kind of art business would you say you have <laughs> without a plan? <laughs> oh, I can't hear you. Nope. Nope. You can hear us. Yeah. I don't have you muted either. Wow. How about we give you a minute or two to figure that out? I'll just go on so there's no pressure on you and we'll get back to you when we can hear you. Okay. Um, so then just, I'm curious. Um, again, this is not a long answer, but just like in a short description, are you selling on your own website, Etsy, Instagram, whatever? What kind of technical solution do you use for your shop, Ilaria? Uh, yes, I, I mainly say, um, sell on Etsy. So, Etsy. yeah, on Etsy. Yeah. And I try to promote it uh, on Instagram and YouTube as well. So, but yes, it's, for now it's Etsy. I would like to move and open also an independent shop, but it takes time. So let's see, probably this year I will be able to do that. But yeah, for now Etsy, it's completely fine. Thank you. Lisa? Yeah, so I have my own um, website and shop because uh, I started making the website mostly for, for a portfolio. Then I added um, online shop to it. Um, and I promote mostly on Instagram. I think it's um, the place where most of my sales comes from. Yeah, to lead to the and website. Can you tell us what um, vendor or like technical yeah, solution? Uh, Wix. Wix? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Harriet, can you try to say something? Oh, I was working. Can hear you. Okay, she's going to come back. I like it. <laughs> okay, so we'll ask one more question and then she'll do the three in a row when she's back. Yeah. Um, Elaria, do you have other income streams for your artwork and what percentage of your income? You don't have to give us actual numbers of what you know, you're earning, but what mm -hmm. percentage of your income comes from your online shop, from your merchandising? Um, I would say that it's a big uh, slice, so probably around 60%, okay. I would say. But it also depends on the project. So sometimes I get asked to, you know, illustrate a book or, to, for example, do the online course uh, for Domestica. So sometimes I have bigger income from other projects. And uh, so it's really like... Away in waves, so it's not uh, always the same. But uh, other income streams, I have uh, Patreon, and uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, Patreon and, uh, and domestic. I would say yeah, because you continue to get something monthly when people uh, see your course. So, ah, okay, that's yeah. interesting. Mm. Yeah, thank you, um, Teresa. How about you? Yeah, so the other income streams I have, it's the collaborations that I make with the brands that can be through work for hire or uh, licensing the, some of the work that I have available. And I've also started doing, well, recently, I think I've, I started doing more seriously uh, last year. In, I got, started getting into the wholesale because I was having a lot of requests for the shops, mostly from the prints. So, um, yes, yeah, so I have other these other streams. I would say the online shop, it's about one third of my income. So, yeah, about 30 percent of the income okay. comes from the online shop. Yeah. So you have yeah, quite a few other legs you're standing on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was doing still uh, workshops before, but now um, I don't have that much time. But uh, that was also one of the things I was doing before more than now. <laughs> Interesting. Thank you. Harriet. Am I Can back? You yes, you're back. I don't know what it was. It was weird. I don't I, know what it was. I don't know either. 
That's but you're here. Today. That's what matters. Cool. Uh, so, income, income string in yeah. your artwork. Uh, my shop, I don't know what percentage it counts for because that's not my, I don't know, not on my radar. Um, but I do do some drop shipping. So with my apparel, that's all fulfilled. That's someone else does that for me. And I'm going to be running an online print shop this year. It shall also be drop shipping. And I've collaborated with Hounties in Australia who my pa- my dog patterns have gone on their dog coats. And <laughs> oh, and there's a card company in the UK called Thoughtful where you can upload your designs um, and they will sell them for you. You get a, like a, a small amount per card, but it can be quite a good source of income, especially in COVID. It was really helpful for me. And it's a great place to start trying out designs because there's literally no risk. So you can upload your designs. I mean, they're all sort of greeting cards and, you know, it's obviously there's a market for that, but it's it's a really good way to test the water without ordering, you know, packs of your own cards that may may not sell so hmm, yeah interesting yeah I, I have lots of questions about how you make those decisions about product and drop shipping and all that so that's really interesting to hear um, I'm going to get the other two questions up for you that you didn't have a chance to answer yet oh. um, <laughs> and that is uh, what kind of technical solution do you use for your shop what does that mean oh shop like uh, Shopify yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like Shopify, uh, yeah, and then we can integrate some systems. So I've got um, Mailchimp integrated, and I so it collects um, email addresses, and I've got my uh, it's linked in with the my apparel, so some people can buy buy apparel through my shop, but it's still fulfilled. And the same with my print shop that's launching soon. It will come. You can buy through my website, but it will be fulfilled by somebody else. Okay, so that's, that's quite good with Shopify having lots of different options for those kind of things. Okay, so as a shopper, you don't see the difference, but it's going in, in different directions under the hood. Yes, yes, cool. yes. Nice. All right. And I think um, this you've talked about for, for you mostly, um, it's the shop, right? Different different yeah, kind of integrations. Mostly, the shop, mostly the products, products that I've made yeah. for my shop. I used to do a lot of commissions, but I've kind of doing less of those. And I used to do a lot of hand um, done ceramics, but time, like the time it would take me mm. wasn't really worth it. So a lot of the stuff I have here is ready to ship, which has like been a big change for me for 2022. Very cool. Thank you. All right. So with that, we are going to go into the round where each of you gets more time to really share a little bit of your experience. So you each get about five to 10 minutes. We go in a circle again. So we start up with um, Alaria right now. Um, and I have a question for you. And that's that you selected Etsy as your platform. And I'm interested in why you went with that route, if you have any pros and cons to it, just anything you want to share in your decision process and your experience with Etsy. Mm -hmm. Yes, I selected Etsy at the beginning because I think it's uh, amazing for people who's just starting with a new business. So um, you don't have to like manage credit cards or technical issues or stuff. You, it's, it's all there. You only have to upload your... Uh, pictures and description and you're ready to go so I think it's uh, it's amazing and um, and yes it's also good because they they, they uh, give you the audience so they put you in front of the audience so you don't have to do it uh, yourself so uh, for example in my um, in my situation I had um, I have it here. The visit coming from Etsy were 62%, which is mm-hmm. good. And uh, the visit I brought is 38%. So from social media and stuff. So I know that many people want to leave Etsy because I think it's expensive. They take uh, 6.5% um, from your sales. Mm-hmm. So it's, uh, of course, it's not cheap, but um, but they also do a lot of work for you. So they put you in front of the audience and you don't have like to push your shop every time uh, so mm-hmm. if you leave etsy you have to you know bring your audience <laughs> to yeah. in front of your products so that's why i think it's really amazing especially if you're starting um if you're just starting then after you have an audience of course it's also good to move out uh, and find other option which is uh, what i would like to do um in the future as well so but for now i'm really happy with etsy mm-hmm. that's, I don't have to. 
It's really yeah. interesting that you mentioned that because I feel like for me, that is one of the big questions I've always had in my mm -hmm. mind, which is like, how big do I need to be uh, to have mm -hmm. an audience that would purchase things if I actually have them made, right? So if it's something that isn't drop shipping, um, if I'm actually going to buy stock, you know, what, what am I looking for? And I think Etsy possibly helps with that dilemma um, in, in that with search and SEO and other capabilities, maybe you have a better chance. Like you said, there is a built-in audience. Um, I mean, what I've done successfully is, is just not having a shop, <laughs> just selling on Instagram, selling my originals, um, not even with the official shop feature, but just in stories, mm -hmm. um, getting commissions, like doing contracts via email, that kind of thing. But I don't have an online shop. Um, so mm -hmm. that's, I think, a really interesting criteria maybe to think about and I'm going to go a little out of the regular routine and just uh, ask the other two artists whether um, they think that it makes sense to start an online shop on their own website if you don't have a lot of reach yet if it matters do you have an opinion on that I think so because that's what I did so <laughs> and so I never had um um etsy shop or another platform because for me my website started as an online portfolio so i didn't create the mm -hmm. online shop straight away mm -hmm. so i want when i wanted to incorporate um, an online shop it was the more more um, normal way to do it was to add it uh, to incorporate it in the website that i already had mm -hmm. um Yeah, but I, I mean, it started from zero. I didn't have that many followers. And also I only had um, illustration, print, illustration prints to sell. Um, it was how I started. And um, I think the other products came uh, as a consequence of me also having a space. So I felt like the need to increase the, the product range. Um, But I think, I mean, if you don't have a big following, it doesn't mean that you're not going to get good sales. I mean, if your products are good and they have quality and people uh, like them, um, I think slowly you can start building your network. That's how I feel about it. Thank you. That's an interesting uh, story that you did, you did make it work that way. So there's, it seems like there's never just one right way, you know, or one successful path. I think there's... I think it depends on how you, how you feel with um, marketing yourself. Mm -hmm. And what I would hate for, you know, I've got friends who are in a similar position where they're not sure and they haven't quite set up their website and it's their first online, you know, financial yeah. presence. And they're like, what if no one buys anything? And I would hate for somebody to be like, I'm going to set up a website and I'm going to sell stuff and nobody buys anything. And it's not because their stuff isn't great because every, every stuff's great, everybody's different and it's great. It's just literally marketing and you're not getting seen and that's nobody's fault. That's that's just the way of the internet. So a platform like Etsy or other, you know, they can be so helpful, especially for a first leap into selling online. I think even for people who are established and selling online, it's still a really great, I, I don't use Etsy anymore, but I did for a long time. And it was okay. great, you know, I paid the commission or whatever because they were offering a service and that made sense. Yeah. Um, and I think if you're, if you don't know a lot about marketing or they, they're really good at kind of like telling you how to take your pictures and what sort of lighting and how to crop mm -hmm. them and the descriptions and they, you know, they, it takes the pressure off that. And I think it might be quite off putting to go straight to an online shop And if you get no sales, I would I wouldn't want that to just discourage people because that's nothing to do with your own work. That's just to do with the internet and just, you know how that works. That's, that's really interesting. Choice. Thank you. Yeah, it's it, I think it gives me and everyone watching just so much more to think about. You know what what path do you want to go? Uh, because I think there are so many pros and and cons. So I think that's even when you do have an audience nowadays at least, I don't know how it is for all of you, but for me, it's, it's a completely fake number. Like those people are there, but for example, on Instagram, it doesn't get shown to them. <laughs> so it's kind of like, it doesn't, you know, even the reach that you have can be very limited, can be much less than the numbers that you think you might have. Um, so if it's like, if I have whatever, 1,500, you know, people that are watching my account, but 
the post is only shown to 30, then really I have much lower reach than I would, you know, like to think. So um, that's definitely something to consider maybe whether a platform that has a built-in audience is an interesting approach. And you can always change it long-term if, if you do uh, build your own audience. So I'm going to hide this. And then I have one more question uh, for you, Ilaria. Um, and that is um, for those artists who do decide that maybe Etsy is the right way for them to start, what tips do you have for them? Um, well, uh, to, to, for, for starting, I will, I would say to collect at least 10 products to start yes i think it's a good amount um so you have uh, you can start from there and then continue to add uh, even more and then for sure to um, try to learn how to take pictures because pictures are really really important uh how to shoot uh, the products um and stuff so um, i think this is really important for the for the products so to be able to show it and uh, to make it, you know, sellable. <laughs> but start, start anyway. I mean, don't wait. This is my <laughs> my bigger. Uh, yeah, I tip. like that. That's very practical and encouraging. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm just going to move you here on the screen because I'm going to bring up something that you shared as well. Mm -hmm. All right. I don't know if you want to uh, just mention a few things um, about your setup, your space, your products here with the images you have. Yes. Uh, last year, I, I had this big um, milestone to, to move to a real studio, which is this one. So I moved, I moved from a corner of my living room uh, to a real studio. So it has been really nice. And yes, this is mainly my packing station <laughs> where I have uh, tape and everything. And in these uh, paper drawers, I have all my stickers and, uh, and the label, the thank you cards, um, because I think it's really important how also the experience that your customer has when uh, purchased from you. So when they, they open my package, they see, you know, the paper, which is customized and they have a thank you card, they get a little freebie. They're so, so happy. So, and this is really good also because they want to take pictures of their uh, packages, of their orders, and they share it on social media. So mm -hmm. um, it's really good for you because they, you know, they share their orders so other people can see it, can see it. So. Uh, I think this is really, really good. How important do you think that is at the beginning? Because something else that I sometimes get caught up on is, yes, I want this unboxing experience. Mm -hmm. I want the branding perfect. But then you're adding up, oh, the custom tape and the custom wrapping paper and this, this, this. And you're like, okay, this investment is so big and it, I have no profit left if I do it this yeah, yeah. way. You know, no, I mean, do it you takes think time, you have yeah. to go all in or do you, did you kind of build it step by step? It takes time uh, for sure to build, but at the beginning you can uh, do a un uh, handwritten note, for example, for them uh, to thank you, uh, the customer, yeah. or you can take like a water activated tape, which is just brown and purchase a stamp and put, you know, and, and decorate the tape with your own stamp, and which is, I think it's really cheap. I mean, a stamp is probably 15 euros or something. So you don't have to go immediately with uh, printed stuff customized uh you know paper and stuff but you can be creative and create any way a uh, good experience i think mm -hmm. that's that's such solid mm -hmm. advice because i guess i always think yeah. of it as like either it's going to be ugly or you're going to have this perfect yeah. you know product but you can do it on the cheap and, and kind of do yeah. it yourself and work up to it that's great advice. Yeah. and it's always better to start you know start anyway which with what you have and then you will be for, built from there otherwise you just stay and you don't do instead you have to do you have to start you have to be confident i think yeah Yes, exactly. This this is my one of, your listings. Um, one of my listing is um, the calendar is my bestseller at the moment. And uh, yes, it's a really good product that I'm doing. I think this is the third year, third year that I'm doing it. And, um, and people always come to, to buy it. So 
even if they purchase the other the, the last year they come again to purchase it again so uh, how did you have the... my... sorry no <laughs> no it's good. okay go ahead how, how did you have the courage the first time around to do a dated product because that kind of terrifies me <laughs> like again okay. if it doesn't sell in the time like it's yeah. you know no one's gonna buy it in july so <laughs> i did it i did it my own the first time i printed I, I printed it at home, so I did probably 30 of them. And it was printed and cut by hand and, you know, put it together with a clip. So it was really handmade at the beginning. And then when I saw that it was really, you know, popular, then the, the year after, after I decided to uh, print it professionally. So that, that's why you have to start with everything that you have. <laughs> Love it. Very resourceful. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and this is your yes, beautiful is, shop. So cute. This is my Etsy shop. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, it's good to have uh, you know the same the same style in the page. And uh, mm -hmm. for me, I always use like the same background to shoot and uh, like some pens and some prompts that I will use all the time. So to make it more consistent. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mainly have this kawaii uh, kind of style. So my characters are. Uh, yeah, uh, the, the are popular in there. Uh, the the stars in my shop. So it's when I switched to to do uh, characters uh, that my shop became more popular. Oh, okay, interesting. Because people like them and uh, they yeah that they want to have you. everything. Yeah, 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 that works. Yeah, your branding is is super strong, mm -hmm. and I just I cannot get over that figure that you have up there over eight thousand sales. That Wow, what a dream! Yeah, but you worked it, it really took hard. took five years, yeah. though. It's, it's not Still, overnight. That's, that's <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing this. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> All right, so I am going to move on now um, to Teresa, um, and let's see. <laughs> so I would love to know at the beginning. How do you make new and recurring customers aware of your shop? So I think now my main, I think now I'm sure, <laughs> uh, my main channel now it's um, Instagram. And um, a way that I found it's quite helpful to lead people to the online shop is to show um, a little bit of my daily, not daily life, but like what I do in the studio because I have a place where I have to come every day. So I, uh, so I show around the studio what I have hanging on the wall. And then I have uh, another room that is more like a workspace where it's not so tidy, like where I am now with all the boxes and the paintings and the materials that I'm doing um, and with all the stocks. So I show a little bit of uh, that place is like the, the pretty space with the shop with everything is uh, hanging and the real world what I'm actually working and it's a mess. So um, yeah, by sharing that on Instagram, I think people will become interested in the process and they value, they start valuing more your work when they know how hard it is to produce the illustrations and the products. Um, yeah, and then I add links to the to the online shop in case they're interested in something that they see. And I have a pop-up window in my website that every time people visit my website, the first thing they will see, it's a pop-up window where they can subscribe to the newsletter if they want to know more news about promotions or um, activities in the studio or about a new product or some kind of sale. Um, and then, um, I usually send, uh, like, a like, uh, uh, Ilario was saying like a nice postcard and sticker, because I think if people have a nice experience when they receive their packaging, it, they are very more likely to do it again, or even to buy it and to give directly to someone. I get that a lot that, uh, repeating customers they come or even new customers and they uh, send it to someone else's address um, and they you can personalize the postcard and say a little thank you note or yeah sometimes people <laughs> they write notes like very private or very extensive <laughs> it happens a lot 
um, because they want to sell it, to send it directly to someone. And I think that's because they have a nice uh, experience with the packaging and the stickers or the paper. Uh, yeah, so then they see it as a nice gift for some, someone. Um, yeah, I think mostly that's it, yes. That's uh, that's really nice. So you you try to catch people on multiple platforms um, when yeah. you know you try to get them signed up for your newsletter and, and everything. I think that's really good to, yeah, have have multiple avenues. Um, and then, so is it true that you don't do a lot of like extra advertising or outreach, or it's people that are already kind of interested in your work from seeing you on Instagram or your website uh, versus going out to like search. For people to put your work in front of for the shop yes you mean like if i make some paid ads or something like that if yeah yeah if you do anything, anything. No, i don't do that i used to do that in the beginning i thought it was a good way uh but then it starts growing like organically and I, i was like okay if it's starting to grow organically let's see and it's it's been mostly like um i was doing that until i reached like 10k on instagram but after that i never used paid ads on instagram or facebook and my facebook got hacked like during covid so i don't even wow. rely on facebook anymore uh -huh. um it's mostly um instagram um yes so my promotion is basically to be consistent in what i post and my products and my daily life in the studio and i think people see that uh, so often and uh, how my process works that they become interested I think if they weren't interested, they wouldn't um, see my stories or follow me because I'm always sharing all the colorful illustrations and the wall hangings and the products um, and the process uh, behind it, like in the workshop. So, um, yeah. And I think because all my products are made in Portugal, I just have some wood trays that they are made in Sweden, but uh, everything else is made here, like in local workshops. Like I try to do that because... Well, I never had an Etsy shop, so I never had the, the thing where they make all your products and you don't have to deal with stock. So I had to deal with stock from the beginning. So I start reaching to local suppliers to see if they could get me the uh, uh, a better deals and also like smaller stock in the beginning. So mm -hmm. I, was, I would say like I just want to make like uh, five or ten items just to see how it goes. And then I'll go from there. And uh, yeah, working locally, I think it makes that easier, in my opinion. Yeah. That's very interesting. Yeah, I, I think working with manufacturers of, of whatever scale is really interesting. And that leads me into a related question for you, which is how do you create new products? Like, how do you decide on a new product and how do you proceed with figuring out how to launch it, how to, you know, how much stock to have? All that good stuff. Yeah, so I try to create a uh, new product every year, or at least a new version of a product that I already have. Uh, for example, the lampshades, it's um, <clears throat> a product that I wasn't sure if it's going to work because it's very different from what I usually do, that it's illustration. And it's a product that has a lot of small pieces. So you have the, the base that is made of wood, And then you have the lampshade is made of fabric, but then someone else has to make the structure and then you have the wire. So it has a lot of small components. Uh, so I start doing by uh, making only a few units. And then every year I make uh, new designs because all my fabrics, they are limited edition. So I only sell them from one year. And every year I have different patterns for the fabrics. And from that pattern, I make the, um, the lampshades, the tea towels, and then the small pencil cases and the pouch bags. Um, so yeah, I created these products so I also don't have uh, waste because of the dimensions that they have. It allows me to not have waste, almost zero waste in the by cutting the fabric. Because the fabric is also made here in Portugal and it's 100% cotton, so it's quite an expensive fabric. So um, yeah, the measurements allow me to have like almost no waste. Um, that was also one of my concerns. Um, uh, yeah, so these kind of products I try to, try to every year to have something new. And then the prints, that is my best seller. 
is the illustrated prints. Um, I always try to launch new prints uh, before spring uh, because my work is very nature-related uh, nature and very colorful. So I always feel that before spring, it's a good time to have like fresh work. Um, and I also do it, um, well, it's really when I feel inspired to do it, but I think uh, also around September. And because I also make wholesale, so the shops like to see new work um, so they can have uh, new things for Christmas. So um, in September, I usually launch new prints as well for a new collection. Um, yeah, how do I decide on the new products? Um, there's not really <laughs> a science about this. Is what I feel that makes sense in my collection um, because my products are very related with interiors, like the, the wall art, the, the cushions, the lampshades. So if I feel there's a product that's going to fit into that category, that collection, and it is missing or people are asking for it, um, yeah, that's how I've been doing. It's a bit of trial and error, really, for me at least. Okay, perfect. And uh, do you offer the same products in your online shop as your physical shop? Uh, yes. Sometimes there are some uh, uh, unique colleges that I, I do and that I put in the shop. And sometimes I don't have time to put them um, online because they're like one of a kind. So I sell them in the shop. Yeah, but most of the things are all in both places. Yes. Okay, very interesting. Yeah. I'd... I think it's so smart you said about the the fabric and sort of using the dimensions and what you're investing into also figuring out what the end product can be. So maybe you start with some ideas, but you want to make sure with zero waste and you know profitability that you're really maximizing what you're getting of that. So I think that's a really interesting take too. It's very resourceful, like uh, Ilaria was at the beginning to you know, use that as inspiration as well. And then, yeah, I'm, I'm super fascinated by, by what you've built. Very cool. <laughs> um, Harriet, would you mind answering the same question? How do you create new products? How do you decide on them? Oh, um, yeah, this is maybe a bit random. As well. I just go for stuff that I really like. And there has been a lot of howlers. I've got some stock sitting in the studio that I should never have... Um, gone ahead with and I generally would just get too excited and I'd be like I've got to order a thousand of these now right now and that has been a mistake and people mm -hmm. are like do you want a sample I'm like no I cannot wait for a sample just send me the product and that has also been a mistake so I've made many mistakes over the years and there is no rhyme no reason between what like the products that things that turn into products it will just be like I don't know it kind of you do something and your heart will sort of sing and you'll have a really good feeling about it and you run with it and I mean sometimes it doesn't work so but I mean maybe we're, I'm getting there maybe it's changing as time goes by that I'm the trial and error is working now so yeah what uh, what are your best sellers for for you do you have something that you feel is really working for made by Harriet uh my new I've got some new it well newish bone china mugs that are produced in the UK and the clay is sourced in Cornwall in the UK and everything is done in the UK because with bone china a lot of it it can easily be imported and it's cheaper and, and it can be decorated in the UK which isn't um, the same and I went up to the factory and had a look around and the work is screen printed on so it's a really really nice process so it means that my black and white work the blacks are so black and um, I work really closely with the uh, with the company, my suppliers, and we've got a great relationship. And I I'm really excited about those moving forward. And same with my tea towels; they're in the made in the UK, and they're all screen printed as well. So it's that kind of. I feel like I'm yeah. Those are two really uh, really really good stuff, and the apparel is selling really well. But I think because it's outsourced or kind of someone else fulfills it, it feels a bit more separate. Whereas my mugs and my tea towels are, are, are some really good, really good sellers that I feel really good about at the minute. So, yeah. Do you generally, um, I, I know these are questions I've prepped you before. So if you're just like, I don't know how to answer it, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm wondering, that's pretty cool. So you actually go out and if you can, you visit these manufacturers and, and build relationships or kind of see the product in person. If you can. Yeah, I mean, if, if I if I can, I would I would like to do more, you know, more of that. I, I, I 
I enjoy marketing and I enjoy social media and I enjoy finding out behind the things behind the process. So if I can go and kind of see that as well, like why wouldn't I? And because with the Bone China, because I work with ceramics myself, although it's a different process, it's really interesting that they've got some quick fire kilns that can get stuff through really quickly. And to go up and have a look and see how my stuff would be made was amazing. And yes, it's way more expensive, but I've got this product at the end that is just stunning. So uh, yeah. I'm really excited about that. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, and then I think, let me see. So you said you do really enjoy like social media and, um, you know, kind of all the behind the scenes. But I also know you said that you don't have a lot of the things that maybe people will ask you about for your business. So I'm wondering, do you have any kind of marketing plan or how do you reach customers? How do you find new customers? You can be honest. Just no, how you no, do it. No, well, there, there is no, for me, there's no plan and that works really well for me. And all I do with everything is just be honest and I'll share stuff that I am excited about. There's no way I could do a drawing and say, I'm going to post this on Wednesday at four o'clock because that's the prime time. I have to share it now. I have to. And that's <laughs> just how it goes. And that's what work, that works really well for me. And it might not for everyone. You know, I know people schedule posts and stuff, but I, I'm very much like in the moment. So there's no plan with marketing and the same with my shop and products. I don't have collections. I don't release stuff at times of year. I'm very disorganized in terms of ordering stock. I mean, sometimes when you're ordering stock, it can take, there's a three or four month lead time which I don't think about all of a sudden it's August, September. I'm like, Ooh, Oh, Christmas is coming up. I should maybe um, be on that. So I don't actually know how I've managed to run a successful business because <laughs> nothing that I do has any structure or um, yeah, professionalism, but here we are. Here we are. I don't know if you're trying to be funny, but it's pretty funny, but it's also actually inspiring Harriet. Here's why. Because I think, again, it proves just like with a different art style, like there is no one solid answer and you don't have to be this. You don't have to have the perfect business plan and, you know, the perfect planned social media that you've planned three months in advance and you can still, you know, be a successful artist. So I, I think it's beautiful to see that there are these different personalities and, and different approaches. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> awesome. All right. So um, I'm going to switch over now and ask you all a few questions that you can chime into. But first, um, I want to give the chance here to the audience. So while we are chatting um, here on the live stream, I would love for you to type up some questions for us. What burning questions do you have about running an online shop for your art that maybe these artists can answer, at least from their perspective? We would love to know what's on your mind, what's holding you back, anything that you have as a question. And while we do that... I'm going to have a few questions for everyone. The first one, again, you don't have to answer this. If anyone wants to chime in, feel free. Um, the first one is if you had to start building your shop all over again, which is the scenario for a lot of those artists watching today, what would be your first step? What would be your advice? I do know what my like my advice. If I wasn't do, if I wasn't going to the Etsy route and I was doing my own website. I, this happened kind of by accident is I had a holding page where it said, oh, enter your email address. And I hadn't really told anyone and the guy helping me with my Shopify, I think I'd put it on Twitter. He said, he was like 30 people signed up. He said, he said, who have you told? And I said, I, I just put a tweet out. And I wish I'd really kind of utilized that because instead I was just like, here's the holding page. Whereas I could have been a bit smarter and like created more of a, I don't know, suspense about the whole thing, but I didn't. So that's what I wish I'd done. Okay, so kind of build build the buzz before you have the products available. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else have any thoughts on this one? All right. Then I have one more question for you before we jump into some audience questions. So get your questions in there if you're watching. But this one is for me, and that's whether there are any resources that helped you establish an artist online shop whether you know you've taken any courses or there's someone you learned from about taking photos or seo or anything else that you think those watching might benefit from or did you all just 
wing it and figure it out in the trenches. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I didn't do any uh, courses, but I did have a, well, I've got the background of photography, which actually was fine art, so it doesn't mean a lot. Um, but, and I had a, a background, I did a small um, stint in a online marketing kind of uh, agency. So that was probably where that came from, but it wasn't any sort of courses. Um, and one thing that I think has helped more than I realize is there is I've got a small network of really close illustrators we're called the breakfast club and we meet and we draw and we've got a whatsapp and it came about through covid and the support we have although it might not be directly related with the shop I know if any of us had any anything we needed from each other it was it's just that has been so special because I think doing this you can feel quite alone you can do a drawing and you can maybe put it on a website that you're not sure how to run or market or point people and you don't want to oversell, but you want to sell, but you want to, you know, it's, it's, it can be a minefield and to know that it's the same for everybody and to have people in that same position, but supporting each other and lifting each other up is really, really special. So I would say reaching out and having a community, even people who are like established, like just drop them a message as long as it's, pitched in a in a way that's nice and it's not just like give me some advice I think you know people want to help people people want to share that information mm. and there's so much stuff I wish I hadn't done and I, yeah I'll happily share share info if that's helpful for people that's why wouldn't I'm, you be? I'm gonna put a pin in that and I want to know more things that <laughs> you wish you hadn't done so we're gonna get right back into that because that yeah that's so important to learn does anyone else want to answer this question before we go to that <laughs> For me, it has been to also look at other artists, especially vlogs on YouTube. So see how they work, uh, see what they do when they pack orders or whatever, when they order, you know. Um, they also share a lot of tips. So I think it's really useful. And then there are some channels that are more into, for example, the Etsy uh, specific tips. So for example, Starlamore or handmade bosses so channels like this they are more into the etsy uh, so both both of them more educational videos and uh, but also other artists to see how they manage the shop to see how they draw to see all of that stuff it's really and also really inspire, inspires me a lot so yeah thank you teresa do you want to jump in you don't have to uh, no, like uh, mostly uh, photo shoots. Like I think it's really important to have nice photos. Um, I've also worked in an online gallery before when we needed to make collages. So um, like uh, you have the interior spaces and you need to make on Photoshop, like how would the painting look like on uh, someone else's home to make this kind of uh, 3D visuals. Um, and I think that also helps to sell well when you have like an online shop so people are able to see how the work's going to look like in a frame or in someone's home. So um, before taking photos, I started making that kind of visuals and I still have a few in my online shop. Um, and I think if you aren't able to take uh, pictures in an actual space or a, a photo shooting studio, that can be a nice way to have your shop and a way to display your products. Mm -hmm. yep. That's that's nice. So learning how to use mock-ups so that uh, they look good and not mm -hmm. very obviously a mock-up. Sometimes you get those. <laughs> yeah, and that's also. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then, whoops. One question, Harriet, I think you were leading into this a little bit, which what is your biggest learning in running an online shop for your art? So are there any things that, like you said, maybe you wouldn't do those again? <laughs> any advice you have for the other artists? I wish current Harriet had told previous Harriet to order samples and maybe sleep on things and maybe check with someone and maybe check get someone else to check your files. Once I sent a file that was optimized for web to go to print, so I had like a 300 cards that were pixelated. And it no. just, I just wish I'd slowed down a little bit and tested the water. And because often I'll be like, well, why would I get 10 of these when I can get 100? And I didn't ever yeah. sell 100. So yeah, and the I prices wish, get better, right? Yeah. So it's enticing I, when you buy more. <laughs> well, I say, I, I say, I wish I'd gone slower and I wish I'd done things differently. But do you know what? I think all of that's been a real learning curve. So if I dove right in and not had 
those mistakes, then maybe things wouldn't have happened how they have. So I don't know, just do what feels right. <laughs> I like that. You, you seem at peace with it. <laughs> yeah, I feel okay. <laughs> how about the two others? Any learning that you want to pass along? Yeah, I also uh, learned uh, not to give up on one product. So if you example, for me, I started to do um, enamel pins and the first collection was just a failure. I mean, I still have them all and um, I didn't think, okay, I want uh, enamel pins doesn't work because it was my fault. So it was these designs that didn't work because then I redid with other designs and they went better. So you just, I think you need to, to make these mistakes in order to, to grow and to understand things. You, you really need to go through that process, I think. I think so, that is and, that's and great, great advice up. and not be put off by it. Could not be, yeah, you, know, you exactly. can make, you can make more products. I've had more failures yeah. than I have successes of products, I think. So mm. just how the cookie crumbles. What, what I'm taking from the both of you together is like only invest what you can lose. <laughs> like try some products, but maybe don't put your whole budget in your first launch. Yeah. Yeah. Stuck yeah. With it. That's the end of your online shop. So start a little smaller, maybe. <laughs> Teresa, anything else you want to add? Yeah, for me, I would say it's trust your guts like more than you trust customers' opinions because oh, I'm the beginning. I agree. I <laughs> yeah, so, agree. yeah, I think the first fabrics that I, well, no, not the first ones, but like some of the first was during COVID, I started making fabric masks and uh, I wasn't sure what would be the best pattern because I thought, oh, maybe people want something really colorful and nice because it's different or maybe they want something more plain and not so that calls so much for the attention. So I used to make these polls on Instagram, like what pattern do you like the most? And then the ones that people didn't, not they didn't like, but uh, the one with less votes would be the one that would sell the most in the end. And then I didn't have enough stock and that happened more than once already. So I was like, let's say I'm just doing the patterns and the things that I really feel they're going to, they're going to sell. Like you can't trust the impulse of people voting on Instagram. That's what I think. Yeah. Like to trust what it's the best for your collection and for your online shop. Yeah. To trust your guts. That would be my advice. That, that reminds me of this meme. I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's like a Venn diagram. So two overlapping circles. And it says like, people that tell me, make prints of this artwork and people that actually buy prints. And it's like this yeah. tiny overlapping <laughs> circle. That sounds like your mask questions. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all for that solid advice. We have one audience question here that I think would be awesome to answer. So RT is asking... Do you know who your ideal customer is, quote unquote? Everyone seems to know, and I haven't a clue. So does anyone in this round know? I mean, does she buy ideal customer means like the target audience, mm -hmm. like yeah, all our customers. Well, from what I from what I see um, on Instagram and by the website visitors. I would say my customers are mostly people between 25 and 35, like, um, and mostly women. Yeah, I would say about 80% of my audience, they are women. Um, yeah, so young people or like young couples, um, they, have, they want something new and colorful for their homes. Um, I mean, the ideal customer is... It can be anyone. I mean, these are the people that buy the most, but yeah. Do you, I, th I think you have a pretty solid grasp on who your customer is. Did you like target them? Kind of, did you design for a certain person no. in mind? Or are you just saying like, well, these are the people who have found me. So now I know as I can. Yeah, it was, it was more like that way. Yes. So I start visualizing like uh, which, which, from which countries they were coming from and uh, their age because you can see on the instagram uh, the professional board you can see like people where they're coming from and uh, their um, age range uh no but i didn't target anyone i was just doing what i what i liked i was like i like this this and this and then i don't know because 
I mean, that age range. So maybe because that's why people, they can relate with it. Um, but sometimes because I have also my physical shop and then sometimes I have this uh, really nice old ladies that they come here and they want to buy everything. They even ask if I have like curtains with my patterns, which I don't because I don't sell uh, fabric by the meter, just the, the products. And I got surprised with, because I'm not used that people from that age range, like they, they buy my stuff. So I get really happy when I see like uh, older people that they also want to buy um, colorful things and bolts. Um, yeah, but it was kind of built up by itself. Like I didn't target that audience specifically. Yeah, no. I think as well, if you if you have an ideal customer in mind, you might end up creating work for what you think is your ideal customer and actually it's kind of cliche about you should just be making work for yourself and it, it does sound yeah and you can get you can get bogged down with sales and what's sold and try and recreate something like that again or what does well on Instagram all of these things that kind of to do with algorithms and marketing which are beyond our control which don't actually reflect you know the kind of stuff that we we work our work or what we actually like and I literally think I, I mean I don't I can look at stats and tell you you know who my customers I don't are I don't know but um yeah I think just make work that you enjoy making because then it will just be easy and it would more of it will come and if people like it and they buy it that's great and if not just keep making because that's kind of what it's about really I think how I view it yeah yeah I agree uh completely I agree with that. And uh, I think you have to be happy about your products and happy with what you do and share your, your process behind it so people can see it and, uh, and and like it as well, like your heart, like your products. Yeah. You have to be happy first <laughs> for people to buy. Yeah, that's that's beautiful. I do, I do think that joy and enthusiasm about your work is so infectious and yeah. it's going to find the right people. And, and like you also said, maybe as you develop products, your target audience, like it's simple, it's, it sounds stupid to say, but like your target audience is those who love your products and buy your products. So depending on what route you decide to go, that kind of changes, right? So maybe it's not set and now you need to create for this target audience, but maybe if you go with stickers, that's someone who buys stickers is maybe a completely different person than someone who's going to buy an original art piece or someone who's going to buy, I don't know, a tea towel, like, sure, there might be people who want to buy all those things, but at the same time, it could impact who you're going to reach. So, you know, maybe, yeah, just test a few things, see, see what works and see what people respond to. And if that is the vibe that you're trying to relate to, I guess, right? Because I, I guess that's important, too, is you want to make things that you love and that you love people responding to in a certain way. So it's kind of a two way street. So I, I really like that because listening to all you speak makes me think that sometimes a lot of us overthink this and certainly, okay, maybe it's not good to throw, you know, your whole life savings at this thing. <laughs> if you have no idea what you're doing, but at the same time, it's not that big a deal to just, you know, get an online shop set up, try a few products and if it tanks and you can't get rid of them then maybe that's your story that you can tell years down the line like you are <laughs> about your dead stock that's sitting around and all artists are probably going to have that experience um, and it's just part of that learning curve to to find your corner of the world well I think the reason we've all start creating is because we love creating and I think when you transition to then being like I must make money it can really change why you're creating and not always for the better and it and mm -hmm. I think it's just important to remember what about the making of it brings you joy I think that's beautiful it's it's a it's a tightrope right to, to walk sometimes because if your um, income or your living is, is dependent on it, right? It's, uh, it can't all only be, be fun, but without it, certainly, uh, why, why are you doing this at all? So I think that's a great reminder. 
All right. Uh, we don't have any additional questions uh, from the audience, I think, but um, I want to give you all a chance before you wrap up. Is there anything that you really wanted to share with artists about what you've learned or, yeah, just about how you run your online shop? Any last words of advice or any stories you want to tell? <clears throat> I think I'm a great example of what not to do. <laughs> and yet it's working, so I don't agree well, with that. <laughs> yeah, I don't, yeah, uh, yeah, so. <laughs> uh, I think you're a great example. This is my personal take. of not trying to be someone that you're not. You know what I mean? Like you can have all this advice of like, okay, do with this A, B, C, D. But if that's totally not how you work and your personality, there's... You know, it can work without it, too. So I think that's actually quite inspiring. Thank you. <laughs> you have to believe it, too, Harriet. <laughs> I know, well, I don't know what else to do. You know, so I've had some advice recently, and my guys helped me. He's like, oh, you should post this and share this. I'm like, yeah, I will. Uh, I think you have a good thing going. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, and for me, as I said, is uh, for me, as I said, is to really start with what you have, start small, and then, uh, then yeah, build up from there, and learn from there. Learn, you have to learn on the way, and uh, and also look at other artists uh, for inspiration and uh, and in order to learn. But you have to you have to put yourself out there, otherwise it won't come to you. <laughs> I think you have to act and be brave. There's room for everybody. I think. Hey, those are those are some key things. Be brave. There's room for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Teresa, any final thoughts on your end? Yeah, there's a sentence I really like, and sometimes when I talk with people about this, I mention it. It's um, I heard it once at university in a presentation. It's a marathon, not a sprint, because you have to start running, and you can just uh, run too fast in the beginning and then stop it, and that's it. I think it requires. Uh, persistency and work all the time so it's not just put your work out there and then you don't sell it and then that's it it's over not going to do it again <laughs> I think it's it uh, it takes time and you have to start and when even when you are in pain like in a marathon you have to continue and don't give up yes that's what I think a lot of times even about um, collaborations or everything yeah with starting a business in an online shop, I really think the marathon, it's a good, <laughs> good That's marathon. really good advice. Well, that's kind of what, what Harriet was saying too, right? Like maybe don't, don't go too far into a product and an idea. Uh, maybe start small, start slow, like Alari was saying, and just do this iterative process. And I'm super inspired now. I feel way more confident that I can pull this off. And I think a lot of people watching feel the same way. So thank you so much, the goodness of your art here, for your comment. Don't second guess yourselves, artists. You're doing amazing. <laughs> so thank you for everything you have shared. Um, I thought also this was a really good conversation. It was, um, I think, helpful and inspiring. And and shows you again there's more than one way to go about this whether it's the platform whether it's your style how you plan or don't plan what kind of products you offer what art style you have these three artists are all doing it in a little different way and yet they all have those kind of takeaways in common that we mentioned at the end so believe in yourself and try and don't give up all too fast um and yeah We'll have a few episodes coming up here in the next few weeks and months. Um, the next one is next week, and we're going to talk about getting into wholesale. So this series is really supposed to help you think about, hey, what are all the different income streams? Don't do them all at once. <laughs> Don't try everything at once, but figure out, hey, what works for me as an artist, for my art style, for how I want to work and create this business. And hopefully you can learn lots and yeah, just figure out a way to make it happen for yourself. So with that, I want to thank all the artists here that have taken time to share their personal experience. It was so nice meeting you and learning from you. And thank you again. Thank you. For Thanks for having you. us. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Bye, everyone. Um, <laughs> for everyone watching, the links to the artists' um, websites, shops, Instagram, and so forth are in the video description. So please make sure to go say hi, follow them, check out their shops, all that good stuff. All righty. 
Thank you. And I will see you all next week. Bye.